So welcome to our Sunday gathering here at Bible Center. And uh, today our discussion is going to be on the uh, some of the faculties of the mind. Um, some of those faculties that we're going to deal with today will be our faculty of our belief, our beliefs, um, information. Communication, and thinking. That's a, you know, that's a pretty good start. We're going to ask some more we can uh, as we go along. But beliefs, information, communication, and thinking um, on this new moon Sunday. Uh, first of all, before we really get off into uh, these faculties, we just want to just get an understanding on the same page of why we talk about them on the new moon and why, why am I emphasizing on this new moon Sunday. Um, and all I'm simply saying is that for those of us who are aware about the uh, our lunar cycle, um, typically we're talking about the full moon and the new moon. Um, generally speaking, the new moon is a time where we plant, especially within our, within our being, within our uh, spirit, you know, our life force, our energy, our chi. Um, that part of our spirit is very receptive at the time of the new moon. Mm -hmm. So whenever we want to um, facilitate change within our being, our personality, we all meet with the concept of meditating, right? And there are certain times when we meditate that actually propels or facilitates the uh, exponential or the fastest manifestation of that meditation, whatever it may be, whether it be something to heal our bodies or whether it be to create something on the outside, there are certain times in our meditation um, are heightened. And one of those times would be um, at the new moon time. Another one of those great times would be at the winter solstice. Um, and generally speaking, you know, in, um, at that yin time of the year. So since our new moon is coming up on Veterans Day this week, uh, interesting enough, it was Columbus Day last month. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, on next month, the full moon will actually be on December 25th uh -huh. in December. Veterans Day is what day is? The 11th. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, you know, this is just kind of interesting, you know, not to mention that oh, we had like four blood moons this year, you know, the most you know, in such a long period of time. And the last one, the Pope came, was around the equinox, and, you know, just reflecting on what was going on, you know, a couple of months ago, that was some uh, intense times. Which is to say the least that if we are, if we are um, just paying, paying attention to this, to this lunar cycle, there's some power that we can tap into to, you know, help facilitate change in our being in a major way. You know, and of course, generally speaking, the moon is associated with our set or a mother, you know, that nurturing energy. So again, what we're doing is we're giving honor, especially the, the, uh, the males, the guys, you know, um, it is almost like doubly empowering for us, in my opinion, because we're actually acknowledging that feminine energy, you know, uh, giving homage and reverence to that feminine energy. And as we do that in, as it relates to the moon, we can't help but to also, uh, by just by us, most of that will manifest over time in our relationship with the feminine energy on this plane, right? Because we understand how nurturing, how healing, how powerful that feminine energy is. You know, we talk about the emotions all the time. And if we understand what the emotions are, we all would want to have emotions, the energy emotions. But to have emotions in a responsible way so that we can direct this energy with our will which is the masculine part of our being. So from a, from a perspective of, if I can take the masculine aspect, which is that will, the intellect, to plant that seed of what I want into that feminine energy of the emotions, the energy in motion, then that energy will facilitate what it is that I will. So then that's how I become the observer and not forcing anything to happen, but just using my timing factor, knowing when it's the time to implant certain things to allow my energy to do certain things to manifest this. And again, coming back, how that ties in with the new moon and full moon, because again, um, we like to um, say that we're on our spiritual journey, okay? Uh, personal growth, spiritual development, whatever you want to call it, we're on our spiritual journey. So all that we do is, is centered around us, how can we facilitate our spiritual growth, right? 
And if we understand that every month there is a new, new moon and full moon, and that the new moon is a time for planting within our being certain aspects, certain things want to manifest. And the full moon is a time to bring forth a lot of the, um, just, just bring forth the energy of our intentions and of just the energies of the universe, specifically what the what zodiac that, that, that the moon is in. For example, you know, there are typically 12 zodiacs that we're aware of. You know, now it's just in 12 zodiacs. There are 12 months. And each month, that moon is in a different zodiac, right? Or as I like to say, each, each month, that moon is exerting a different planetary energy on the Earth. So what we're doing on our new moon Sundays, as we, we're going to gather on Sundays, and we're going to talk about the aspects of the moon from, its, uh, from the planetary energy perspective. And the reason why I'm using planetary energy perspective is because um, my, myself particularly, I'm a, a student of and per, uh, practitioner, practitioner of <laughs> the comedic tree of life. Um, which is to say that I do understand, uh, generally speaking, the, the uh, astrology and the zodiac. However, those same 12 zodiacs are governed by planetary energies, um, 10 planets to be specific in our solar system. However, from the comedic perspective, um, we, I look at the seven planetary bodies, um, which can be attributed to the same 12 zodiac. It just so happened that those three outer planets, what we call the outer planets outside of Saturn, um, Uranus, uh, Pluto, and Neptune, right, are really, as we, a lot of astrologers like to um, say, they're higher octaves of Mercury, Mars, and Venus, right? So, in ancient times, before, you know, we really got up to the, the three outer planets, we would focus on the seven inner planets, which gives us our seven days of the week, which also has a correlation with the seven chakras. And again, those same seven planets have a correlation with the twelve zodiacs. Okay, so by me making that correlation with the set, because for me it simplifies my life, and I've been working this thing for a few years now, um, where every month I will focus on the energy of that planet that the moon is in, and I will just meditate and give thought to it and cultivate those things in my being. I mean, personally, I've seen, you know, the cultivation and growth, and like, wow, you know, it's just as simple as that. You know, um, one of my brothers, Ali Kusha, and, um, light bulb one day, he was giving an example of a ship and a rudder. You know, no matter how large the ship is, it can be an aircraft carrier, it can be a thousand foot yacht, it can be a Caribbean cruise, you know, there's one little rudder at the end that kind of guides that ship. You know, it, it, it don't turn off a car on a dime. You know, it may take a while, but the slightest turn in that rudder in the ocean will set you on a course either where you're going or totally in the total opposite direction, just a little ship, right? So again, by us using the moon in the lunar, lunar cycle to facilitate change on our spiritual journey, for me, that's like a little rudder. It's like a little slight little, a little small, like a butterfly effect, you know. I'm just saying on the new moon, I'm, I'm giving thoughts to, you know, what this planetary energy is going to be about, right? And the reason why I mentioned the comedic tree of life, because um, what we've done, what we have done, right, because we are our ancestors, um, we left our roadmap, but we have done, we have, we have personified the energies of the planets in what we call the deities or the Anishas. Um, even in Christianity, they call the archangels. You know, it's the same um, energy, 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 right? Just a different name depending upon the time period in which, or the, you know, tradition you wish to study and, and partake this wisdom, right? So, that's why we're talking about on this new moon, this particular subject, but even more specifically, why I believe information, communication, and thinking is because this full moon, the full moon will be in Gemini, right? And the Gemini, the planet that correlates with Gemini is the planet of Mercury. And so with Mercury in the comedic tradition, uh, Mercury the, is, is deified as the deity of Sebek. So we're going to put Sebek up here, because Sebek... It's a personification of the energy of Mercury. And what we said was that Mercury deals with our, our belief system, our information that we take in, our communication, and our thinking. Sabic is a masculine energy. Its temperament is cold and dry. The energy of Mercury is cold and dry. Right? 
So, what do we mean by our beliefs, information communication thinking? You know, how does that play a part into, again, specifically this Sunday, what we're talking about in the full moon and plant within our being uh, certain things, certain aspects, right? So, for example, let's just take beliefs, right? Beliefs is a good one. Beliefs is, I mean, all of them are good, you know, because from the perspective of everything is good and very good, you know, as we learned from knee high to a June bug. You know, everything is good and, and, and always good. So that's the belief that I remind myself of constantly. I have to, right? Um, not only that, there's a belief that I believe that anything is possible. Anything is possible, right? Anything is possible, right? And I can do anything I put my mind to doing. So those are a few couple of beliefs that just, just resonate with me, right? Now, why are beliefs so important? Why are we going to spend some time just talking about beliefs? Well, first of all, some people, I've, I've heard the, uh, the argument. In fact, at some point in time in my life, I've given the same argument. You know, within belief is to be lied, meaning you don't know. So is it better to know something or is it better to believe, have faith? You don't know, but you kind of believe in something. It's better to know. At one point, I went through this whole thing of, no, man, I, I know it. I don't believe. Believe is yada, yada, yada. You know it. But now, as I come to this point in my life, I'm realizing that, again, everything is good and very good. Everything can be a tool. So, in this most common sense, I use my beliefs as a tool to empower me. The reason being because there's another saying that I've come across in this journey saying that, Yes, it, it is true that I do know everything because there's, again, there's a part of my being that's, that knows all. You know, I can either tap into the Akashic records. I can steal my thinking. And, you know, for example, we all had, had the, uh, the experience of we can read some. Of, we, we, we know this information is in here, right? Mm -hmm. But then we want to pull it up. It's nowhere to be found. It's like I know it, but we can't pull it up at will, but we know it's in there. As well as some things we have no idea that we know, and at the right time, so it just comes to us like, man, it just came to me, I just knew it. So we have this ability to tap into that, that thing that is all-knowing within us, right? So, if I know everything, then I believe that I know everything, right? However, I am not aware all the time of that which I know. Yeah, so I can know it, but I just don't be aware that I know it. Even if I know, I know it. Like, I know that's the name of that song, man. I know the name of that song. It's just not coming to me right now. I'm just not aware right now in this moment, but I do know the name of that song. But we played it back in the, uh, at the show. What was the name of that show? Come on, tell me. You know, then we get help and, you know, hints and things that we know we know, but it's not coming right back up all the time. But, again, so in order for me to access that, I, first of all, have to believe that I do know everything. Man. So that in and of itself is a paradigm shift. It's like you said, we're a paradigm shift. <laughs> what do you mean by paradigm shift? I'm just actually changing what I believe in. I just, it's a change of what I'm thinking, right? Because, again, what we think is based upon our beliefs, right? See, these four, they just like, they just like, oh, you, they're different names, but they're very similar, they're very intertwined as far as with this faculty of the mind, the Lucetic, Mercury, you know, communication, right? Because with our beliefs, well, first of all, our beliefs comes from our, come from the information that we get, right? And information simply means that we're being informed versus intuit. The difference is when we're informed is, is information coming from the outside. We can read a book. We can have a discussion like this, or we all participate, because, you know, if you have any questions, if you ask them to add, just say something, jump in at any time. You know, that's how we roll. It's mm -hmm. intimate, and we just share, and just getting it in. And I'm just having to share what came to me over my years of just actually dealing with SEBI, because, like I say, there's 12 zodiacs, so throughout the entire year. In fact, uh, since SEBI is, Mercury deals with Virgo and Gemini, so twice a year, Mercury comes up. So twice a year, we're going to deal with our belief system. And all we're doing at the new moon time, we're just simply saying, hey, man, what do I really believe? Just kind of checking ourselves before we wreck ourselves.